Hollywood. It evokes images of glamour and grandeur and premieres and movie stars, right? The red carpet, which I'm on now. But what is it really? It's a business. It's an industry, like any other industry, and it's subject to change. Change in consumer tastes, change in technology. And people come to me all the time and they say, Frank, with this changing business, and how do I get in? How do I become a millionaire in Hollywood? How do I make it? And I say, it's really quite simple. If you want to become a millionaire in Hollywood, I'll tell you the secret. It can be done. You arrive in Hollywood with $1 billion. You, in <laughs> you invest it in film, and you will be a millionaire before you know it. <laughs> you see, a lot of people make their fortunes in Hollywood, like I saw that Cecil B. DeMille building out there, and a lot of people spend their fortunes in Hollywood. But why? You know, if you look back at the history of Hollywood, in the old days, you had Howard Hughes. He came to Hollywood to make movies. I'm, I'm sure you young people know who he is. And Joe Kennedy, he came to Hollywood. Nowadays, you have the likes of like Ron Burkle and Larry Ellison. They're investing in Hollywood. Why? Do they want to rub elbows with the stars and walk on the red carpet? I don't think that's it. I think, in fact, it's that they're entrepreneurs. And entrepreneurs look for change because change creates opportunity, right? And Hollywood is in constant change. And these entrepreneurs come here and they, will, and they say to themselves, this is a great place for me to get in and make some money. But you see, the first early years of Hollywood, the first 50 years, from 1900 to post-World War II, the only change was the movie studios were making money, money, money. There really wasn't much of a competition in those days. There were five major studios in those days. You probably recognize the names. There was MGM, and for the older folks here, MGM was the glamour studio. I mean, that was Gone with the Wind and The Wizard of Oz. And that's what the other studios, you know, aspired to be. And there was Warner Brothers and 20th Century Fox and Universal and Paramount. You recognize the names. But in those days, it was a little different because the studios in those days had the stars under contract. They were not free agents like they are today. They couldn't get $20 million a picture. They had to work for a salary. They were told what films they would be in, how many films a year. They were swapped out with other studios. So the studios were raking it in. But really what the difference was, in those days, the studios owned the theater chains. So when you went to the movies and you paid money to see the, the film in the theater, they could control not only the content and the films they were making, but how long they were in the theaters and how long they would stay in the theaters. And it prevented small, independent producers from making films and trying to get them distributed. So after World War II, there was a change in the perception. And they realized Hollywood had become a little too powerful. We saw what happened with film in Nazi Germany and, and Russia. They were making propaganda film. And it worried them, well, what if, what if the studios just decided to make propaganda film? What if you know, this monopoly is just too big. And the government came in and told the studios, you have to give something up. And they weren't going to give up the content, so they gave up the actual theater chains. And this was the first of a one-two punch change that affected Hollywood. The second one was a new invention, a new medium that came around right after World War II. Television. Yes, there was a time when we didn't have television. And in those days, surprisingly enough, when TV first became commercially available in the 1940s, it was very expensive. Not everybody could afford it, not a middle-class family. And the TV screen was actually only six inches big. It was, of course, black and white and very snowy. And there was only about one hour of programming a day. Not very interesting. So the studios didn't think much of it, you know? They were still licking their wounds from losing the theater chains. And now, all of a sudden, there was some competition. But they thought it was just a fad. But people, all of a sudden, realized they could sit in the comfort of their own home with their family after dinner as a family and watch their favorite TV shows, I Love Lucy, and Milton Berle, and Ed Sullivan, and really just enjoy being home and, you know, being with the family. And still the studios didn't embrace it. They didn't see it, or they ignored it. The change was there. They could have adapted to TV, but instead, they ignored it. And in fact, one studio chief, and I'm not going to say who it was, but it was a famous studio chief, said, if I so much as see a single television set on this studio lot, I will smash it throw it through a window, and fire that person. That's what Hollywood thought of television. But all of a sudden, America changed and had an insatiable appetite for TV. And NBC and CBS started taking their radio shows and putting it on television. 
And people started watching TV like crazy, and it took off. And the studio that ignored TV suffered. Within 10 years, that studio would be sold, and the lot would be broken down for commercial development, and their films would be sold to another studio. But on the other side of town, there was a studio called Universal. And Universal is not the fabulous studio that we know today with the theme parks. It was a different studio in the early days. They made low-budget horror movies and westerns. And they were having trouble, too, because this one-two punch of first losing the theater chains and now having TV as a viable competitor and not being prepared for it really took its toll. So Universal was, believe it or not, about to go bankrupt when a group of entrepreneurs stepped in and said, there's change here, and change is opportunity. They bought Universal for 10 cents on the dollar. What do you think the first thing they did was? Create a studio tour? No, that came later. The first thing they did was embrace television, the thing that put all the studios almost out of business. They embraced it. Universal became the premier television producer for Hollywood. They used, utilized the backlot to make westerns for television, like Bonanza and those kind of shows. And then the sound stages, they weren't using them for film, so they utilized the sound stages uh, to make sitcoms and things like that. And all of a sudden, within a 10-year period, the studio that wasn't taken seriously in town became a powerhouse. And the studio that was considered the glamour house ceased to exist in, the, in, in a big studio kind of way. So you see,